Uh, I'd obviously prefer us to end him a little quicker. Uh, you know, I, what I hate more than anything is I hate it for Louis Perdomo. I mean, he could pitch really, really well. Uh, didn't deserve that fate. Would have been nice to be able to scratch one across. And number in one of the other innings that he pitched before that last inning, I, I thought he was excellent. That's a really tough gig for a young guy to come in who hadn't thrown in seven days to pepper the strikes on the way he did. I couldn't be more pleased with him today. And that's, uh, I think, out of everything, that's the toughest part of that one. Yeah, he was in the he was in the zone. He was attacking hitters. He wasn't afraid of big situations. He did a great job. You know, at some point in time, you run out of bullets, uh, and, and he did kind of that last inning. But he was still uh, he was still in the strike zone. It was good things for him. It was really good to see. His big league debut was also against this team here, and it didn't go all that great. And just to see him come back just from, from a mental standpoint, see him go as well as he did against the same club and the same kind of a situation. What's it tell you about the progress he's making in that regard? He's getting better. He's getting better. He's uh, he's trusting his fastball more, uh, relying on his secondary a little bit less. He's got good secondary, but uh, he's kind of pitching away from his heater for a long time there. I uh, got back to it today. I uh, thought it played very well, and he, I think it was a stark contrast to the first outing of the year on opening day to what he did today. So, like I said, out of everything, I, I hate that more than anything for him today. Ah, you know, we, we stood on the cusp of sweeping the Dodgers today. We, we had the opportunity. It stings to let that one slip away from you. Uh, we had guys on the mound that we wanted to have on the mound, uh, especially in regulation. And guys have been very good for us for a long period of time. So uh, it stings to let that one slip away. But, you know, the series was good. Obviously, the Giants series wasn't what we were looking for. You guys got the four-run lead in the fifth, and then it kind of just all turned. How surprised were you to see that, and, and how did it kind of unravel in your mind? I don't know about surprised. Uh, they've got a good offense. It was dormant for a good portion of the series. Uh, I think you'd give credit to the guys that threw for us up to that point in time. And Colin had been really good. Uh, gave up three fairly quick singles in the sixth, and or three quick hits in the sixth. And uh, you know we went to the pen for Quack, and uh, you know wasn't quite as efficient as we hoped he would be. And you know Bookter's been outstanding all year. Justin Turner got him off the bench. It was a great swing and. Uh, Maurer gave the one up to Kendrick, who looks like really locked in at this point in time right now. Safe to say you're going to have to pull up some bullpen help from somewhere? It's probably a reasonable assumption at this point in time. We ran through it today. I think Brad Hand is probably uh, – I mean, he, he survived because he was pitching extra innings yesterday. He was the one guy that didn't get used, but he wasn't available. We weren't going to run him back out there. Uh, I think Amarista was at that point in time. I think we were about a batter away from him coming in. Uh, you know, I, I think the board said Perdomo had 80-something pitches, you know, a few intentional walks. Uh, so I'm, we don't really run those into his pitch count in our heads. But he threw 60 pitches the last time out in Milwaukee, so it wasn't like he was at some ridiculous amount of pitches. I mean, you got to be – you got to be really committed by the time you go to a position player. I try to avoid that at all costs. doesn't get any easier for you guys going up to San Francisco now, a team you've had a lot of trouble with. No, they're good, and we're running into uh, Cueto and Samarja, who we just saw uh, five days ago at this point in time. And uh, obviously, uh, you carry a little baggage from a game like today. Uh, you got to shed that baggage. You got to wake up. You got to get excited to play baseball again in a good city, in a good ballpark, and uh, try to flip the script on those guys. You've got like Cueto twice in a week. He can be so deceptive, give you so many different looks. Uh, does it help to see him in a close? proximity period of time because you, you're more used to what he's doing? I think we'd all prefer not to see him uh, the way he's thrown against us, but I think like, sure the more familiar you get with a guy, the more accustomed you are the way he pitches you, and then you can make an adjustment to that. So uh, theoretically it could help. Uh, he's a good pitcher, though. He'll make changes, too. Greeny, any comment on, on Matt? He's, he's pr scuffling pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, it was a tough night. And it's obviously been a rough stretch for him. He's a guy that, like, this isn't the first time he's been in this situation before. I know, like, last year didn't start the way that he had hoped it would. And in the year you look up, he's got 25 home runs and 100 RBIs. Like, that's who Matt Kemp is. And I think he's going to be far from that by, it's all, by the time it's all said and done. And it's a rough stretch right now. Like, he'll, he'll turn it around.